The opinion expressed on this program, Money and Business, are those of the host and his guests, are not necessarily reflect the opinion of Radio Shalom. Please read the prospectus before investing in mutual funds and consult with your financial advisor. Live from the studios of Radio Shalom, 1650 AM in Montreal, Canada, the city of Joie de Vivre, the world capital of culinary variety and the home of the Montreal Canadiens. This is the Money and Business Show with your host, Samuel Izerzer, consultant with T. E. Mirador, a national wealth management company answering to all your financial planning needs since 1972, known as TE Wealth in the rest of the country and headquartered in Toronto. Every week, Samuel and his guests discuss money, investments, financial services, and the world economy. Over the next hour, you can have your questions about business and personal finances answered. So call 514-738-4100, extension 200, to speak with Samuel and his guests. And now, here is the host of the Money and Business Show, Samuel Izerzer. Money, money, and business. Uh, global stock markets, are they posed for a crash by summer as Europe is handling its debt crisis? Deflation on the horizon and a reduction in spending by aging baby boomers. Can it put the brakes on global growth? Severe market downturns don't usually happen in a U.S. election. But the U.S. Federal Board is running out of bullet to spur its economy. Charles Nenner believes the stock market, like the economy, and indeed the universe, is predetermined. After all, our lives are controlled by cycles. The cycle of night and day, the work week, the seasons, the human gestation period of 40 weeks, the tides and the weather. Nenner's work is based on cycles. His research focuses on uncovering and harnessing the overlapping patterns that are at work in the world. But Nenner has demonstrated the ability to glimpse into the future, and that's why hedge funds and other institutional traders pay top dollars for his insights. My name is Samuel Izerzer, your host uh, to the Money and Business Show on Radio Shalom CJRS 1650 AM in Montreal. Thank you for tuning in live uh, on the business show uh, with our business studios headquarters in Montreal, the financial capital and the home of the greatest hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens. We have another great show for you today, and as always, you can call in. If you have any questions, comments, or criticism on today's topic, please call us direct at 514-738-4100, extension 200, or email me at moneyandbusinessshow at gmail.com if you have any inquiries. Or you can also visit our website at www.radio-shalom.ca. All our shows are archived there. I work as a financial consultant for TE Merada or TE Wealth uh, um, in the rest of the countries. I've been providing corporate executives, CEOs, families, employers, and employees with independent wealth management and financial education services since 1972. You can visit our website for uh, my contact information at www.temerada.com. Today, uh, we have Mr. Morris Cousineau from National Bank Financial. How are you? I'm doing well, Sam. How are you doing today? Good, good. Another great show today. Another great show, and uh, we're approaching our 100th show now. Do you know that? Are we? Yeah, we're getting there. You see how time flies when you're having fun? Well, you went on the website and started to count how many shows you did? Yeah, that's what I did. I think, really? I, I'm not sure. I don't the have century enough, mark. I don't have enough fingers, but I'm up around 97. 97, 98? Yeah, wow. Something like that. Nice on 98. I think we should buy a champagne. You know what? After the show, maybe we should just start counting how many shows we did. That's uh, it. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll tabulate that. Good. And you know what? I don't want to waste a lot, lot of time, but who's nope. our next guest? Because we have um, so many uh, I have so many questions to ask Charles. Go ahead. Yeah, it's very windy today also. And very right? windy and cold. Windy's fun. Anyways, and two, uh, we, our guest is Mr. Charles Nenner, who Mr. Nenner in 2001 founded and is president of Charles Nenner Research Center. Mr. Nenner has provided uh, his independent market research to the following entities all over the world, hedge funds, banks, brokerage firms, family, uh, family offices and individual clients. Charles has been the talk of Wall Street since accurately predicting some of the biggest moves in the markets over the past few years. Charles Nenner's system uses the unique algorithm uh, uh, using the factors in multiple cycle movements with international and institutional clients managing hundreds of billions of dollars. Charles advises uh, Charles's advice is highly sought after. So go ahead, Sam. Yes, uh, shalom, and thank you very much, Charles, for being on the Money and Business Show. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good. I'm doing fine. Good. I know it's a little bit late there in Amsterdam, but how, how do your system work? I know it combines cycle, waves, and, and, and target algorithm, but can you just explain us, just in a nutshell, how does it all work? 
Well, the only way to accept and understand is if you can accept that uh, mostly there's no free choice in the world. Uh, even the Rambam says there's uh, not much free choice when we talk about masses of people. Maybe individually you have some free choice, but I don't believe too much in free choice. So once you don't believe too much in free choice, then you have to figure out what the no free choice is like that people have. And then you start discovering a pattern, and then you see whatever the papers tell you or the world tells you why markets go up or down, currencies go up or down, is just an illusion, it's an explanation of what has to happen anyway. And that's actually the basis on, on the whole system. So uh, when, when you find the underlying uh, theory, it's like uh, throwing a ball in the air and knowing about gravity, understanding that at a certain moment it comes down and it, how high it will go and how long it takes until it comes down. And it's the same is true for the markets. Do, uh, so what you're trying to say is everything's predetermined, right? Is that it? Every, there's no free choice. Everything is predetermined. Uh, that's another question. Mm -hmm. It's just a question that if, uh, if uh, let's say, you sit in a place and everybody talks about you have to buy this and this stock, or this is what Europe does or Europe doesn't do, then most people react the same and they think it's a free choice, but they influence each other, and that's why they have no free choice. If it's predetermined, I also think it's predetermined, but that's even more difficult to understand. So let's talk about choices. The people who put together the European Union a and the Euro had no clue, I think, what they were doing. Not surprisingly, Charles, uh, you're also predicting uh, the eventual collapse of the Eurozone. Is that right? I mean, the next year or two? Yes, yes. Well, I, I think they're going to they're gonna stay with, a, with a, a strong Euro, a northern Euro, and a southern Euro. That's I think, is going to be the solution. Oh, that's going to be a breakup? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the only way to get out of it. And then uh, then I think uh, we're almost back where we were, the couple of strong countries, and uh, the rest has to see how they get out of the mess. Would, uh, uh, would the euro survive itself, the, the, the euro? I, I, think it's, I, I, think, I think it will survive. And now you ask me, which has not been done before in history. Right. And as you know, I work with, uh, with the continuation of what happened in the past. Um, and uh, I even when I worked at Goldman Sachs for 50 years, I was classes. I was giving classes to newcomers who was PhD from Harvard, and they thought, you know, any day something new can happen. I said, that's why we don't pay you. We pay you because you studied uh, financial history, and we hope that based on the history, you can predict the future. Otherwise, we don't need you over here for such a big salary. So in this case, it's uh, it's something totally new, and um, it's my guess as well as your guess. So, Charles, explain why do you forecast that 2012 will be a tale of two halves? Uh, do, do you still think that, you know, there's a little bit more upside uh, in the equity market, talking the S&P 500, uh, or the, the TSX here in Canada, um, and, and you feel like the bleak outlook for the global equity market is consistent with your economic outlook, is that right? That's correct, that's correct, and uh, I, on a regular basis, send out three overlays of three markets, the market uh, that came down from 1929, how it continued, the market, uh, the Nikkei that came down from 89, and S&P, and it's a, it's a perfect correlation. So all these markets go on, uh, go the same way, and um, so we should bounce for, you know, we can hold up till the end of the first quarter of 2012, and then there's going to be a big mess. Now we can come up with reasons why it's a big mess. One is that there has to be a huge refinancing in Europe. And if they cannot get it done, it's a big mess. Second is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm predicting the start of, of, an, of a big war, the end of 2012, 2013. So we might see the first signs already. So we can come up with a couple of reasons why it will happen what happened. And then the other thing is that although we have some pickup in the economy right now, I think it's going to roll over again and be in bad shape for, for a couple of years, starting in the middle of 2012. So there, there are enough reasons to... Uh, to uh, figure out that it's not going to be that great. So what are you recommending investors to do? To sell their stocks or keep some stock or a third of their stocks? Um, what are you well, recommending the, 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 for, for investors or, or listeners of uh, the Money Business Show to do? The problem is that uh, the people who have savings, I also have savings, so I almost get no interest on the savings. And people who thought to retire don't get any interest, and they're forced to do something with the money, which in normal cases they wouldn't do. I think that's one of the reasons why the market is holding up again, because people have to make some money. Um, 
part of that, I am afraid very much for the banks. So you would call from Canada. I'm not so much afraid for the Canadian banks. They're in good shape. But in other countries, I tell people, although I don't like real estate, maybe you should buy real estate because at least you have something if the system breaks down. Um, like, again, that's not so urgent for Canada at the moment. And um, as you know, what I've been saying for a long time, I will buy some farmland. And um, did you just take, say uh, farm? Did you just say farmland? Farm yes. Okay. And t and take advantage of the uh, in, a, in a soon bottoming cycles in uh, in uh, agricultures. Um, it doesn't have to be in in Canada. I'm uh, I'm joining a friend who has uh, farmland in Peru, and he's uh, he's selling grapes to uh, to uh, India, China. Says there's always a market for it. But that's very specialized. I also don't know too much about it. It's just that he asked me what to do. What I would do is I would uh, be out at the end of the first quarter of uh, of 2014, uh, sorry, 2012, especially if you see the uh, S&P reach 14, uh, 60. That's, I said, if we don't get a sell signal, that's where we're going. So 14, 60 in the S&P 500, if we don't break that on the upside? Um, no, 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 no. If, if we don't break down, then that's the upside target. Oh, if we don't break down, it'll go to 1460. Yeah, but then you really have to be out. Okay. So uh, you, you got about 150 points from here. From here, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's another 1,500 points in the Dow, about? More or less, right? Usually. Usually, right, uh, Morris? That. Okay, good. All right, I, I do have uh, Charles Nanner here uh, on the Money and Business Show, uh, live from Amsterdam, uh, founder and president of the Charles Nanner Research. By the way, how do we get to, uh, you know, if somebody wants to uh, go on your website or, um, you know, want some information, can they just email you? No, we have, we have a site, charlesnanner.com. Okay. Uh, or you can just put in Google Charles Nanner, and you can request the... Uh, the letter comes out four times a week. Nobody's going to charge you. You can take a look for, for, for months or so, and then decide if you like it or not. Okay, and so after a while, they will ask you, do you want to continue or not? And then, then you have to pay. But in the beginning, it's for free. And, and, and what's in the... Uh, uh, they have to subscribe. Um, okay, they, they go on the website, they, they subscribe, and what do they get out of it? They get market research you know, on gold and, and the equity market, commodities. Gold, in, interest rates. Okay. Uh, uh, stocks, also uh, some international uh, markets, like European and Indian China markets, okay. uh, natural gas, and whatever is important. Good. Okay. Just just stay on the line. Again, my name is Samuel Izerzer here for the Money and Business Show. Samuel Izerzer in the business headquarters of Radio Shalom, 1650 AM in Montreal, Canada, with the Money and Business Show. Samuel Izerzer is a consultant with T.E. Miradal, which has been providing individuals, families, businesses, and employees with truly objective financial advice and education since 1972. You can visit them at www.teemiradal.com. You have questions about your personal finances? You need advice in making sound financial decisions. Samuel and his guests are ready to take your call at 514-738-4100, extension 200. And now, back to the Money and Business Show. Morris Cousin from National Bank Financial, and we're back with our special guest today, Mr. Charles Nenner, who's on the phone with us live from Amsterdam. He's the founder and president of Charles Nenner Research Center. And our question for the day is, what will trigger the S&P 500 to drop in 2012 and 13? And later on, is the Chinese real estate in a bubble? Go ahead, Sam. That's good. I want to hear about that. Also, uh, Charles, um, unless the United States unveils more stimulus, you know, like the two previous quantitative easing or bond purchasing program, the recent market rally can't last, Charles. What would trigger the S&P 500 drop another six or 700 again? You know, you spoke about the war. There's a war pending. Uh, would that trigger, or is it just the economy itself or the euro? Uh, what would trigger? Um, well, first of all, I don't think there's any stimulus necessary at the moment. It's 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 muddling along very nicely. Uh, not for the people who are out of uh, out of uh, out of a job right now. But you talked about financial markets. Financial markets like very low interest rates. The corporate profits are at record highs. If there would, at this moment, if there would not be the threat that anything can happen in Europe, um, then the market probably would be already higher than it is now. Um, I think the problems will come from, from somewhere else. Uh, uh, the, you know, you spoke about the war. Would that trigger the, the, you know, the, the, the fall of the S&P or the, or, the, or the stock market? 
Well, I think that, that, that definitely that will trigger it. Uh, but the fear of war, I think if we look back uh, in, 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 in a couple of years, then we see that the war doesn't have to start with a bang. It can start very slowly. So uh, I don't know if they're going to close uh, the, down the, uh, the, the, the strait uh, where all the oil comes from. That will be a, a major problem. We're bullish on oil. Again, I do my cycle work, and the reason always comes later. The oil prices are going higher. But uh, the United States says this is a red line. I don't know what I mean by that, because once you cross the red line, then what do you do next? So I think I win for, 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 for big trouble. And, and uh, um, the world is very unstable. It's, and it's not like you sit in Canada, United States, and there's a first world war, second world war, and you're safe at home, because it can happen anywhere. And that will bring a very doom and gloom over the investing uh, public. So you also do cycle research on war. I mean, how back? I mean, how far back do you go? Uh, Two hundred yeah, years, like five hundred years? No, yeah. three thousand years. It started the Mandarin Empire oh boy. In, wow. uh, in China, and the problem is that the wars we had now, if we call them wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, don't, don't even show up. That means is the conflict was too small to be shown in the cycles. So what, for looking for something bigger. So what do you consider a war, like a World War One, World War Two? I, is that the kind of war we're looking at? Kadath um, Korean well, War? Well, those are very, you know, I always say a Vietnam War is, is a war like that, the Korean War that, you know, it doesn't have to be a World War One and Two. Um, so it could be anything. My, my idea is that we have a war against terrorism, that, um, that uh, they get uh, the weapons of mass destruction in the hand, and we don't really know how to attack them, because until you figure out who did it, you know, they do it again. So it's, it's going to be a very complicated situation. Does the war cycle goes in what in 20 years and 30 years the major ones or 50 years? Uh, is there's that a major. There's a major war cycle of 100 years. So if you take 2014, uh, uh, 13, and you go back then, and you have uh, 100 years, then you have uh, uh, the First World War, and another 100 years, uh, you go back to Napoleon, and 100 years. You, to take a look on Google, and uh, see what was the war. Uh, around 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900. It goes back to 1200. 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18, 1900. And you see there's a very regular 100 year cycle. There's much more than that. But that's a very simple one. You can find out yourself. Okay. So, um, so you, well, you just go to, it's interesting. You go to Google and you say uh, major war in 1600. And it will bring up the major war and then the major war in 1700s. And the maids were around 1800s, and then you see it yourself. Okay, so I guess a century ago we had a major war, and is there a major war, you know, in the horizon, like you said, like uh, uh, in the third quarter uh, or the end of 2012? Well, that's too much of pinpointing, but it's start because these wars, wars usually take a long time, so the, the cycle is very wide, but it should start late 2012, 2013. And like I said, it can start very slowly without you noticing that there's a major conflict and it can turn out into a major conflict. Charles, in the United States, 92 million baby boomers are now uh, shifting on, on average, you know, from spending and borrowing uh, to savings and paying down debt. Charles, the Chinese are still heavily dependent on selling goods uh, to the United States and Europe, and the Chinese banks face serious difficulties uh, with problem uh, loans. Uh, will the Chinese economy, will they not escape the woes afflicting uh, the global economy? Well, the numbers I see is that they slowly, and that's how usually uh, capitalism starts. First, you export goods, and then you have people who make money, and you create an internal market. So the Chinese are very busy uh, creating an internal market. Uh, of course, they still need uh, the exports, but soon they will have an uh, internal market also that they can sell goods to. Uh, I think that uh, the that part of the world, uh, talking from Singapore to uh, Vietnam to China, especially Australia, will, will escape the, the, the mess of the economic downturn. There will be a downturn, but not as bad as, uh, as in the rest of the world. And uh, that's why we, uh, we're very interested in Australian dollar long term. I think uh, that's going to be uh, outperforming. So I was just going to ask you, which country do you like the most in terms of fiscal policy, its economy, and, and uh, interest rates? Uh, is it Australia? Is that it? Yeah, I think also Canada has this uh, things pretty well organized compared to the rest of the world. 
Um, why, why do you like the Canadian economy? Is it because of the financial system, how sound it is, or is it because of the commodities that we sell? Uh, no. Over? Of course, of the commodities, and of course, of the soundness, uh, relatively soundness of the uh, financial system. So you'll be buying the Canadian dollar? We're looking to buy the Canadian dollar, not yet. Uh, at the sec next cycle uh, low, I think that is in, in a month or so. But especially if you see it uh, at 101, then I think it, it's uh, it's a buy. Still, it's a couple of weeks early, but I think longer term, it's it's uh, it's it's a nice currency to be long. So you feel like it may go to 113 US, uh, 114, 115. What is your target? Let's in one year from now, the Canadian dollar. To be honest, I don't. I'm not ready with that question, okay. so I don't. I cannot give you a target. <laughs> uh, and what about the Australia? But it, it, it regularly, it re all these things regularly are on the website against charlesnender.com. And if you take the research, what you can get for free for a while, it will give you all the levels and the timing and the cycle lows and the cycles high. Um, so everything is there. I just don't have anything, anything ready in my head. But you can, uh, you can really look it up. Okay, uh, definitely will. Do you still believe that the bull market in precious metal, uh, will it continue? As you mentioned in our last show, that yeah. gold may hit like 2000 or 2500 at, at in that level. You still believe in that? Yeah, yeah, that's still, and uh, I think it, uh, it should, should start in a couple of weeks or so, the next uh, bull market uh, or bull move. So you'd be buying at what, around $1,600, the uh, gold? Around that no, level? I would prefer, we, we, our level is 15.50 where we started to be interested. I think you get a chance to, to see it going one more time starting next week. So what so do you like gold? Next week have a cycle high. So what do you like gold, Charles? Is, is, is it because of its stability uh, or, or is it because it's hedging against the U.S. dollar? You feel the U.S. dollar is coming down? Or what's happening in, your, in, um, uh, in, you know, in, in the Eurozone? Well, there are all kinds of reasons why people buy gold. One thinks we're going to have hyperinflation. One thinks we will have deflation. You should know that if 50% of the history of the gold boom market, it was deflation. It was not inflation. Uh, and most of the, uh, for hundreds of years, the major item was always deflation. People just remember what they went through. So they think inflation is the problem. So deflation, then you might have a war problem. Then a lot of people are buying uh, gold coins. Because they said, listen, if, if we're in a big mess and people don't accept paper money anymore, then at least I can pay my bread with the gold coin. And that is probably, uh, gold is then easier to, to accept for the, for the guy who sells sell bread than a silver coin. So that's why I think gold is going to outperform. So you'd be buying gold at this level? More or less. No, 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 no. I, I have a cycle high in a week. I think we still go down one more time, and then I will buy it. So fifteen fifty. Uh, what do you say? Fifteen fifty gold. Um, fifteen fifty the price target, and then you start buying. Okay. We're at sixteen sixty yeah. one now. So another hundred dollars. But he's yeah. right about gold compared to gold stocks or other things. I mean, gold has doubled since nineteen ninety eight, and right. the stocks are all at the same price, and gold has doubled. So a lot of frustrated investors yeah. holding stocks out there. Yeah. Go ahead, Charles. I think, I think they're going to catch up, but not yet. Again, the cycle on gold stock is down. In the end, they're going to catch up. They must. But then now it's too early. I think they will go lower still. Okay, good. Charles, just stay on the line. Um, I have Charles Nenner, found, uh, founded and is president of Charles Nenner uh, Research Center. My name is Samuel Izerza for the Money and Business Show on Radio Shalom, CJRS 1650 AM in Montreal. We'll be right back in two minutes. Families, businesses, and employees with truly objective financial advice and education since 1972. You can visit them at www.termirador.com. You have questions about your personal finances? You need advice in making sound financial decisions. Samuel and his guests are ready to take your call at 514-738-4100, extension 200. And now, back to the Money and Business Show. Morris Kuzno from National Bank Financial. We're in the studio in Montreal and live from Amsterdam is Mr. Charles Nenner, founder and president of Charles Nenner Research Center. And the question of the day is, what will trigger the S&P 500 drop in 2012, 2013? And later on, is the Chinese real estate in a bubble? Go ahead, Sam. Yes. Uh, Charles? Hello, Charles? Yes, yeah. Here. yeah. Yeah, I, I was just thinking before, when you, when you spoke about, you know, at the beginning, you know, everything's predetermined and, and no free choices, but 
So whatever the Federal Reserve is doing or um, in the Eurozone, uh, all the quantitative easing and bond purchasing programs that they're doing, um, everything's predetermined, right? So if, if the cycle says it's going to go down, it will go down no matter what. They're just prolonging it. Is that right? No, that's not prolonging it. It just uh, we had we had uh, uh, giving out in 2007, 2008. Uh, we also do cycle economic uh, indicators. That economic indicators would bottom in the first quarter of 2009. And if you go to my website, you see on CNBC, I went uh, in there in February. I says now that I remember the S and P was like 680 or so. Now it's a big buy. So the, the fact that I can show you that two years before the first quarter of 2009, it showed that all the economic indicators went down and bottoming in the first quarter of 2009 uh, brings up the question, did it make any difference what Bush or Obama did? And the answer is no, it didn't make any difference because the economy had to bottom out anyway in 2009, February, March. So it doesn't make any difference. They don't prolong it. They don't make it shorter. It absolutely is, uh, is a futile uh, exercise. So even if there's quantitative, if, uh, quantitative easing three, there's still it's predetermined that probably one of these days the, the market cycle will, will take its course. Is that right? Right. It's not like you, you might think that uh, everybody's always looking for a Freudian father figure that will, will help us uh, out in the world. And the fact is not a Freudian uh, father figure. Uh, if you read now the books uh, the, about the Greenspan meeting, you see actually also Greenspan had no clue what was going on. And uh, it doesn't make any difference. So if it has to be quantitative easing, it's going to be so because the cycle says there has to be quantitative easing. And if the cycle says there should not be quantitative easing, not again. Give you one example. In the 80s, also 90s, when the OPEC was very, uh, very influential, uh, and everybody's waiting, what would the, what would the decision be over the weekend? I could tell you because I knew on Monday morning what the uh, oil price was going to be. Um, so, I, if I could say what the oil price was going to be, I knew what the decision would be. So they had no free choice. So it all comes back into: is there free choice or not? Now let me say: if there's free choice then stay out of the market because you have no clue what can happen tomorrow. If there's no free choice, then you have a way of improving the way you invest because then if you make a mistake, you know exactly where the mistake was and you can fix it. So uh, I tell people usually don't be in the market only if you uh, understand systematics and see that there's no free choice and try to figure out based on the past what you can expect in the future. So with, with all what's happening in the Strait of Hormuz with Iran and the U.S. and, you know, uh, do you think oil will hit new highs in 2012, 2013? Mm, I have a target if it if it does if it continues up to 122, 123. So that's not a new high for the moment. What, uh, and with, within the next year, is that it? Yeah, yeah, in this year. But of course, if we get trouble over there, then we might get higher price targets. And uh, now you have your answer why the market would come down. You know, I'm not in the camp of $250, as people say, but let's say that's true, then it's very clear that uh, it's going to kill the economy. It's not going to kill the economy so much as that there's going to be so much fear because any second anything can happen, and people will, not, will keep the money in their pocket. They're not going to spend, uh, especially if interest rates continue low, as I expect, and they have no, no pensions. The, you know, the pension funds here are cutting down. The money that people get that will work for all their life in Europe, they're cutting down because they don't have enough money anymore. So it's a very doom and gloom situation we're going to go into. When, yeah, I, I hope not. Um, I went on your website, and I know the U.S. dollar and interest rate. You go back to the, uh, to the year 1780, and, and you forward right. forecast to the year 2000. 2040. Wow, that's yeah. That's a that's a lot of years. Uh, so so going forward with the U.S. dollar, with the U.S. dollar, would this be the year of the U.S. dollar? Do you think the U.S. dollar will be entering a a bull market at this stage? I think the uh, I think it's already in in a bull market. I think we have uh, another important cycle that will push it up uh, in March and April. But then I think in uh, around 2014 and 15 it will collapse because then the uh, United States has such a debt problem that uh, everybody's running out of the dollar. 
So 2012, 2013, uh, or up to 2014, the U.S. dollar will have its bull run against what major currencies like the euro and the, uh, the Canadian yeah. dollar, the U.S. Uh, and, and the uh, Australian dollar, uh, and then after that, the the debt will catch up to the U.S. Is that it? Yeah, and then it will be uh, too hard to handle. I, I'm surprised there's not more focus on the U.S. debt right now. I mean, that debt's humongous, and everybody's talking about Europe and other problems in the world, and there's not much focus on well, the U.S. Well, it's going to come to the shores one of these days to the U.S. Well, it's they there can't right get now. out of it. It's I there mean, right now. Unless they do something. Well, I mean. here, here, here you go. Once the cycle will, will be such that people have to worry, then they suddenly start realizing what's going on. It's just that the cycle is such on the U.S. dollar that they don't, they, they, it's not the headline. So the news is there. They just don't, don't focus on it. And once the cycle is turning the other way, then suddenly everybody is coming up with look what's wrong with the United States and that's going to be the end of the dollar but I have been saying for years it's not the end of the dollar but it's going to be around starting in 2014-15 and this new gold cycle will kick in and the gold may even go even higher than that if the US yeah. dollar will come down we're, we're looking at what 3,000 I mean I'm just guessing here is it is yeah, it over $3,000 we're looking at here well, it says there have been all kinds of calculation. If they go back to the gold standard, they, you can even come up to $50,000. It sounds ridiculous, but that's what it should be. Uh, who knows what's going to happen then? Uh, I'm happy already if I know what to write for the next couple of months. <laughs> okay, good. So let's, given your outlook for the global economy, what are your favorite investments uh, for 2012? Is it something uh, tangible? I mean, I know you spoke about buying farmland uh, earlier on the show. Uh, well, what else? Commodities, well, you'd corn, be, beans. You'd be yeah, first of all, you're surprised. Potash. I think we have another rally in the in the in the 30-year bond, uh, starting in a few weeks. So that's that sounds strange, but there's going to be a new rally. Um, and I like the uh, the corn, wheat, beans, but again, you have to know when a cycle lowers. So again, I urge people at least take a look at our, uh, our free uh, newsletter for a couple of weeks so you're not going to lose any money and we will show you when the cycle lowers and then you really have a good entry to go along on those commodities. The, uh, the commodities or commodity related stocks like you did in the past, Charles, where is, was Monsanto, Mosaic, Potash, stocks like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the same. Those are the stocks that you want to want to be in. Yeah, okay. that's uh, that's the sector. Yeah. Could Could you mention the website for the listeners who are just tuning in right now? Uh, where they should yeah, find you and you subscribe to, to your newsletter? Yeah, go to charlesnenner.com. dot com. You see there. Uh, if you want to check out what we say, we don't say. You see all the television appearances where we give exact yeah, dates. Yeah, I I see that you're on CNBC. How it works. Yeah, but you're on CNBC, Fox Channel. Fox Channel. Yeah, I see that charlesnenner.com. dot uh, com. And you there's a place there where you, where you can request if you leave the email, you can request the uh, the newsletter, and then check out if the dates and the levels work for a couple of weeks. Check it out yourself. Can I, ask you, sing. can I ask you a question on how did you get on CNBC? How did they find you? I mean, is, is it something that uh, was a word of mouth? Because they, they like no, to use you a lot there. I, I, I see that. Uh, you're a lot on CNBC on your website. Yeah, it started after I was written. I uh, don't always mention it, but I was head of the, of the market timing of, of Goldman Sachs. I worked for the department who made the, the, the prop traders who invested their own money of Goldman Sachs. They used the systems. Of course, now this that... that not allowed anymore. I'm not sure what it is, but they closed it because of Obama rules. And once it was Wall Street Journal, so now there's a competition between Bloomberg, CBC, Fox Channel, Yahoo, who's coming on first, who's coming second. And um, I can actually always go on, but I don't want because I have to fly around too much. Um, but uh, that's how they started with the Wall Street Journal. Because I remember last year when we did the show, we did it uh, in Israel. Are, are you still teaching in the university? Right. Are you still teaching? No, now? I went back to Miami. I just I, I'm in Miami uh, right now. Okay. I'm back running the firm in the states. I just happened to be in Amsterdam. I landed two days ago. Okay. Uh, I was teaching in Israel, which which brings up a very interesting point, which you don't hear anywhere else. When I said about uh, Teva, you know Teva, for yes. certain courses, says, look, yes. I showed them cyclists down, it's coming down. So I got a question from one of the students: What if we all pray that Teva will go up? Will it make any difference? <laughs> Such yeah. a question you can only get in Jerusalem. It was a very interesting. Question <laughs> we, right. we had him on twice last year, I believe. Uh, in August and later. No, we had him once last okay. year. Okay, it was August and, and two years oh, ago. Oh, two years ago. Okay, right. and and even Charles, you. you you sing also, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's, it's uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something good. Else, something <laughs> super, super so for no career. You're, you're a man of many talents. So you were finishing up with Teva, is that it? The the story with Teva. There were, everybody was. You no, know, no. It was interesting. They said yeah. if we all pray. So then we went into what praying actually means, and if you can influence something or not influence something. So it was very interesting to teach in Israel. They come up on a total different angle. Uh, you don't hear in other universities. Um, I, I'm looking at the stock price uh, for Mon, uh, Monsanto. Uh, we're looking at a bottom head and shoulder. I, I know you're a technical analyst too. And it, lo- it seems like if it breaks $85 in the neckline, uh, we're looking at uh, 45 or, or maybe $30 on the upside. Could that, could, could, is that a good analysis? I was just running to my computer. Okay. <laughs> to take to take a look, I didn't. I uh, haven't seen. I had it started the the, the uh, t- it's 2009 till 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 today. I'm yeah. looking at it. Yeah, bottom hand take shoulder take or forming something with a bottom hand shoulders. People who don't know a bottom hand shoulder, they can Google it. Uh, I mean, it's not or, the or they can explain it, right? Yeah, I see that the cycle is up into uh, into July, so that will be helpful. Okay. And it's a, I see indeed it's a real it's a big head and shoulders. I didn't see that. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, well, I, I, I saw that this morning. I looked at it and I go, I, I got to mention that. Uh, one one uh, way, um, if you don't want to buy stocks, you can buy the power shares. Is that right? Uh, DBA, the uh, the symbol. Uh, it's an exchange traded fund. Is that one way also to buy the agricultural stocks? Yeah, although it's very, they fool around a lot with those those uh, those I shares and that stuff. It uh, you usually lose on it because they roll over the contract, uh, which is in the premium or not premium. Um, I would prefer not to do it. I if I would be not a huge investor, what I would do is I would uh, I would take some calls on commodities, let's say corn, wheat, uh, buy them 30% out of the money. Uh, as far as you can, you say a year out or so, a year and a half out, and uh, just have not such a big investment. But if I'm right, then you can make a lot of money. I have a, a question on real estate because soon I'll have someone who's an expert in the in the Chinese real estate market. But let's go to the U.S. Uh, real estate market. There's a lot of um, uh, people coming down here saying buy you know um, U.S. real estate it's very cheap is it time to start buying U.S. real estate at this point? Um, I've been saying this man for, for, for the last couple of years we're going to have some bounces but the, the time to buy it is only 2020. Two, I'm sorry did you say 2020? Uh, sorry, in 2020 that's when the major low is. So this but is not the like, major. It's like in every. It's like in every bear market. You have some bull bounces, so you could have a year that it picks up a little. Well, bit. how much how much but lower can real estate go? I mean, already well, everything's down. I mean, not everything, but it could be fifty percent uh, down, or so some areas are sixty percent down. Uh, you're saying they may go even like eighty percent down or or more. Probably. I think so. Yeah, I think I think I think we're unwinding what I call the super cycle that started in the in in, in 1750, 1760, and we have been uh, keeping it going by creating more credit, more credit going off the gold standards, making sure we don't have a depression at the recession. And I think we have come to the end of a major cycle in 2014, 15. That's why I see the breakdown of the dollar, and uh, this this real estate boom that has been going on. Let's say since after the Second World War, uh, is not over in, in one or two years. So in 2020, um, this is what you suggest your clients, your, your hedge funds or, or the banks, uh, to, buy or to buy real estate in the U.S. Is that also the Chinese market too? Or no, I agree with the Chinese market being in a bubble. Okay, the Chinese. Uh, so I w- yes, I would stay away from that. And again, although I don't like real estate, I like the banks less. So I would still say, people, you know, at least you have something. Okay, so it might go lower for the next uh, eight, uh, nine years, uh, but at least you have something left if the banks uh, don't make it. Good. Is there anything that you want to say before we go, Charles, uh, to our listeners here in Canada, Montreal? Um, what do you... You know, just give me a conclusion here. What did you want to maybe say, uh, especially, you know, cycle research and so so on? Well, what I would like to say is that I know it's hard to believe that these things are preordained and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a factor of life. Take a look at, at what we do. 
and uh, get acquainted with it. And when you see uh, things happening, like we have a major low in a certain currency, and then you see two days later something happened in the world, and all the papers write why it happened, you start looking at the world totally different. You don't even have to invest. It's just an interesting point of view to understand how the world functions. Good. I want to thank you, uh, Charles Nenner, founder and president of Charles Nenner Research Center. Thank you very much. Uh, I know it's a little You're bit welcome. late. We'll uh, it, yes, uh, God willing, in the future soon, in the next cycle, right? <laughs> Definitely. Thank Definitely. you, Charles. Very in yeah. insightful. Very insightful, and thank you very much. Okay. Have a Bye have a good day, well. and thank you. Good. That was Charles Nenner again. My name is Samuel Izerza for the Money Business Show. Radio Shalom, CJRS 1650.